out-of-state investors, if you're priced out of your home market, you don't have to just quit investing or give up on the dream. There's homes like this all across the country that are a lot cheaper than you think. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I'm your host, James Wise, and this is the show where I work with you guys one-on-one -on -one to help you start, build, grow, even sell your real estate portfolio. I, I sell them on another show here called the Investment Properties for Sales Show, right? But this show, this show specifically is all about you guys, the buyers, the investors. And the man I'm working with today is my dude, Andy, pharmacist from Oregon, right? Wants to invest out of state because he's priced out of the Oregon market, right? The deals are just too expensive out there. So he came out here to Cleveland. Holton Wise, my team, we could help him buy the properties. Then, of course, we can handle the maintenance, property management, insurance, title insurance, the whole nine. So if you want to work with me in the same way Andy's been doing, guys, just send my team an email, sales at holtonwise.com. Give us your number. We'll call you, talk to you about the process, right? And the process it starts one way and it changes, right? My dude, Andy, we're we, we doing uh, 10 total videos, right? I did uh, eight. This is the ninth video. And we've, we've looked at several different things. And recently, Andy, you come up with the idea that you want to try to focus in on some two-bedroom, one-bathroom homes. The reason being... Uh, other investors, a lot of other investors, they're focused on three and four bedroom homes. So you think this might be a nice solid niche for you to kind of slide in there? Because I know uh, in the previous uh, videos we've done, you know, we've ran into some things where we got outbid or just the deals didn't come together, right? So you're trying to like find that nice little niche for you where you can kind of swim in there and, you know, reduce some of that competition. And I think that makes a lot of sense. And this particular property right here another great example of that because i actually sent this to another investor we ended up not doing that deal together so you might be able to slide right in there 1010 riverside drive Elyria 44035 listed over a month ago at 59,900. now if you go through the photos of this particular property right it's it looks pretty damn nice right we got a nice open concept we got you know fairly neutral color scheme throughout we got uh, decent looking fixtures in the kitchen and the bath for all intents and purposes uh the property looks great as far as the neighborhood dude this is a solid neighborhood solid c-class neighborhood i like this neighborhood quite a bit there is no reason that uh under normal circumstances this property would not immediately fly off the shelves at 59.9 honestly you could probably make the case that that's actually a little bit lower uh, than what it should be selling for. But this thing, it's not selling. Why is it not selling? I'll tell you why it's not selling. It's because it's got a tenant in there and that is actually hurting the value of this property. Now I know you, Jeff, and everybody else who watches Holton Wise TV, you guys, much like myself, we see tenants as assets. We see tenants as helping us operate our business, right? Our business is collecting rent. We are treating these homes uh, as financial investment vehicles, right? But you guys have to take a step back for a minute and remember that's not what they're necessarily intended for, right? Homes are intended for people to live in. And a lot of times they're not uh, going to be priced based upon what somebody's willing to pay in rent, right? The market will be driven by owner-occupied buyers. The nicer the neighborhood you get into, uh, the more so that's true, right? When you're in like a C-class neighborhood, it's it's usually probably like 50-50 or 60-40 one way or the other, right? But when you get into like DNF class, it's almost all investors, right? Which leads me to this property, 59.9. Like I said, that should probably under normal circumstances be probably pretty low. But the particular situation here is we have a tenant in there and they're only paying $680 a month. So that is killing this property's value. And that's where Jeff, I think you and I could step in and really take advantage of the situation. You see, under normal circumstances, if this property was empty, you'd have owner occupied people looking at it and you'd have investors looking at it. Well, right now we got a tenant in there. So owner occupied people are not interested, thus leaving us with only investors. However, the property should be renting for about $900 a month. Under normal circumstances, this is a $900 a month rental. But the sellers rent it for way too low, dude. It's not worth it to try to rent single-family homes for anything other, 
under 750. Honestly, I don't really like to go under eight, right? Uh, so like 680 for a single family home, it's, it's just not worth the hassle, right? So the seller cut off all owner occupied buyers and now they've made it very unattractive to a lot of investors out there who may not understand that the market rent is actually much higher. So because of that, we're going to take this little $680 rental, bring it in $8,000 a year, $8,160 to be exact. And we are going to try to beat the crap out of the seller. We're going to try to lowball them. And we're going to try to pick it up at 45000 because I think they're not putting their best foot forward. And I just think there is going to be a lack of interest based upon the stuff I've just been talking about, right? So currently, right? At 680, I anticipate an average of 407 going out the door to operate it. So I think it's going to make an NOI of 3200 or so a year, right? If you pick it up at 45 Gs, that's a 7.3 cap. And after we finance it out, you're only into the bad boy for 11,250, 14% return on your investment. Nothing amazing, like nothing to get super excited about. Like I would say if going forward, the property was only going to rent for 680 bucks a month for all of eternity, I would say, Jeff, dog, let's pass on this. There's no point to doing it. Definitely not a point to paying uh, 45 G's for it. But the fact that this is really a $900 rental disguised as a $680 rental, dude, you got to hop on this because I think that's going to allow you to pick that thing up at 45000 under normal circumstances, dude, we'd be able to sell that. Like if it was already running for like 900, dude, that's like a $65,000, $70,000 rental, just like that, bro. So we have a lot of meat on the bone here, right? So we're going to take advantage of the situation to try to squeeze out a discount, right? That's going to be the move here. As far as how we go from $680 in rent to 900, I think we should do it slowly, right? I think we take it over. Uh, take the tenant on, continue to collect their rent till their lease is expired, give them a 30 day notice that we're increasing the rent. And I think we just go up in steps, right? Go from 680 to 750. If they, they stay, cool. Then go from 750 to eight, then go from eight to 850 till we get all the way up to 900. If at any point in time during that, they don't want to do it, they want to move out. That's fine. That's great. We're going to probably have to do a very minimal turnover because a lot of the, the updates look done. I don't think we need to do new kitchens, new baths or anything of that nature, right? We're just going to be cleaning it up, probably repainting it, maybe patching a couple holes, and then we should be good to go for our next tenant, bringing us in $900, thus really increasing your ROI. And as far as the mechanicals of this particular property go, uh, most of them are mid to end of life, right? So furnace, hot water, tank roof, all mid to end of life. But we've calculated that stuff in there, right? If you look at the chart again, I've got a $34 budget every single month that I didn't even include, right? That's coming into you right now, right? Like your repairs, your maintenance, your vacancy, your non-payment, your CapEx, 34 each, 400 bucks uh, each for the year. So that's $1,200 that I didn't even account for in the NOI estimate I gave you, that 3,200 bucks, 3,276. That's in addition to another 1,200 that's probably coming home to you right now. But I didn't want you to count that 1,200 as your profit because eventually you're going to have to use that money to upgrade the home, right? These roofs, it's like a four, maybe $5,000 roof. They only last 30 years. And I believe we're probably mid to end of life on that roof. So you're going to have a $5,000 bill coming up, but then you don't got to worry about it for uh, 30 years. So that's why you're saving that money. Same thing with the furnace. They last about 30 years. They cost about three Gs, hot water tanks. They last about 15 years. They cost a G, right? So that extra money, I want you saving it up for things like that. And like the repairs and the maintenance, I want you saving that because when the tenant does move out, like I said, we're going to probably repaint it. And then vacancy non-payment, you know, these tenants that are currently there, they're paying right now, but in, in the real estate space, brother, you don't get to collect rent 100% of the time. If you did, it'd be great, but that's just not how the cookie crumbles. So we're calculating that stuff in, right? We're saving for that. So this deal is actually so much more profitable uh, than what it currently looks like, which is, again, is great for you and I, because I know the value of this deal. I think I've done a pretty good job illustrating it to you, uh, but hopefully the seller is having a rough time based upon all the things I mentioned. And that's why we're going to try to beat them up and try to steal it from them at 45000 All right, Andy, let me know, man. Let me know if you think this one will make sense for your portfolio. But it's all about options, brother. It's all about options, man. It's all about doing the due diligence on a bunch of properties, which is why I've got one more 2-1 for you that I'm going to show you right now. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.